With the previous video, we now saw how we can easily start and stop Wiremock with uh, JUnit 4 and the class rule. So when it comes to JUnit 5, uh, both the concept of the JUnit 4 runner and rule and class rule is no longer there and superseded by the extension API of JUnit Jupyter. And unfortunately, there is no official JUnit 5 extension available from Wiremock itself. So there is now a draft pull request from a community member to bring an official JUnit 5 extension to Wiremock itself. So this is currently an ongoing process. There are, however, some community extensions. So here, for example, this Wiremock extension adds this missing piece of integration to have a seamless integration of Wiremock and JUnit 5 to our project. So we could use this one. There are also two other Wiremock JUnit 5 extensions. So here the community really stepped in to create some of these. And this one here is the last one I, I found, which is at least somehow actively maintained. Unfortunately, none of them support our use case. So with our test setup, we want to start Wiremock before a test class. So all of these extensions implement the before each and after each callback lifecycle of JUnit Jupyter and don't start it statically before the test, which we require for our test where we need to start Wiremock prior to starting the spring test context. So that's why we can't use any of these, but for test cases where it's good enough to start the Wiremock server for each independent test method, you can pick one of these three extensions to save yourself some keystrokes and reuse it, or wait until there's no an officially supported JUnit 5 extension directly from the Wiremock project. As an alternative, um, I want to provide you with a recipe that you can use instead. So this is now tightly coupled to Spring. So you can't use this recipe here in case you are testing an application that uses a different framework. In case you're not using Spring Boot and can't use the following recipe, you can always fall back to the manual approach where you start Wiremock with the before all life cycle and then stop it, or also write your own extension that, that fits your needs. But I will now show you an alternative approach that we can use when testing our Spring Boot applications. And therefore I will create a new class. This will be called Wiremock Initializer. So with Spring, we can implement our own application context initializer. So with these application context initializers, we can add further custom logic that will be applied or executed uh, during the bootstrap phase of our spring test context. And as part of this class, we can now do multiple things. So one thing is we can override uh, test property values and apply them to the test context. So then as soon as our test gets executed, um, we already overwrote the properties and don't have to use this dynamic property source, which we used for the previous tests, but now can do this inside this initializer. And also as part of this initializer here, we will now start and stop uh, the Wiremox server and will also register it as a spring bean. So then for our tests that involve a spring test context, we can auto wire the Wiremox server like any other spring bean and use it to stop our requests. So for this, as a first step, again, we have to start our Wiremox server. Similar to the examples before, we will use a default Wiremox configuration and just specify that we want to have a dynamic port. What's next as part of this initializer, this will be then called when the spring context starts. We will also make sure that we start the Wiremock server here already. And when starting, we also have to ensure to stop it properly. And in this example, we will bound the lifecycle of a Wiremock server to the lifecycle of the test context. So once the test context shuts down, we will also stop the Wiremock server. And therefore we can add an application listener, which will listen on spring events. And then in case we see the context 
closed event, we will also stop wire mock and we can register this listener as part of this initializer here. And therefore just say add application listener. This expects here a Lambda, which gets past the application event. And inside as Spring populates multiple application events, we first have to make sure this is really a context closed event. Otherwise we might stop wire mock too early. And then if this is the case, we can say stop and then already have here the life cycle in place. Next, we can register Wiremock as a regular spring bean programmatically here. We can request the bean factory as part of this initializer and then say we want to register a singleton, give it the bean name Wiremock server, and then pass here the instance. So with this line, we will then be able to later on auto wire Wiremock to our test class. And as a last step, we now have to override our uh, properties. So therefore we can use this helper class of spring test, so test property values, and can specify which values we want to override. We can then define here, we want to override the to-do base URL. And this will be now exactly the base URL of Wiremock. And as a last step, we have to say we want to apply these test property values to our application context, which we get passed here as part of the initialize method. And with these now 10 lines of code, we start Wiremock, register an application listener to properly stop Wiremock, register Wiremock itself as a spring bean. So we will later see we can inject it to our test. And also as a last step here on the bottom, override our base URL. As part of this setup, we could also already add HTTP stubbings for calls that are fired uh, right after our spring context starts. So this can be helpful, for example, if you want to mock the OAuth2 discovery endpoint or any other of your HTTP clients uh, does some initialization uh, on application startup where you want to provide a stubbing for prior to starting the context. Also with this initializer, you can interfere and then already adhere some stubbings uh, depending on your needs. To now register this initializer, we can use the add context configuration annotation and specify here the initializer's attribute to point to uh, our Wiremock initializer. Uh, there's one missing piece here. Uh, we have to parameterize this application context initializer here and specify a configurable application context. So this was missing here. That's why it was complaining here. So now with the parameterized implementation of this interface here, we are able to register this initializer for this particular test. And for all of our integration tests where we would need this configuration, we can then apply this annotation. And now can magically auto wire here our Wiremock server because we did the registration as part of the Wiremock initializer with the register singleton. And with this configuration in place, let's copy over an example from the previous test. So we'll save some keystrokes here. Let's use here the example where we provide a file. This already works out of the box. So here Wiremock server now refers to this uh, private field of our test. So it's no longer a static field because we inject it here from our spring test context. Stop first the response. So we can remove here delay because we want a fast response and return here the response to 100 JSON as part of the resource folder. As with all of the lessons of the series, use the web test client to reach out to our Spring Boot application, ask for the result of slash APIs slash to do's and then do some expectations as it is internally just a delegation to the web client here to real call our architecture. This should just return the mocked response. And if we now execute here our test, we will see here a green test case and we're now able to at least outsource starting and stopping 
Wiremock to an own initializer. As already mentioned, uh, the community Wiremock extensions unfortunately doesn't fit our purpose here as we need it with a, in a static fashion. But as soon as the official Wiremock extension for JUnit 5 uh, will be available, we can uh, remove this setup steps here because with this setup we are tightly coupled to Spring and Spring Boot. So these Initializer won't work for Quarkus, Micronode, or Jakarta EE. There we have to find a different solution. And also one small downside here is after each test, we still have to do the cleanup. So either do this after each or before each, and then say Wiremock server reset all, because otherwise all the stubbings would be still registered inside the Wiremock server, as uh, nobody currently takes care to reset them. With this last setup here, I want to finish the Wiremock series. With those four videos, you should have now a test recipe at hand to mock HTTP calls of your system under test and provide the HTTP responses depending on your test needs. You saw how you can manually set up a Wiremock. So in case you also use a dis different test framework, for example, TestNG, which I didn't uh, cover it so far. You can always uh, opt in to manually start and stop Wiremock, either for your entire test class or also for a specific test method at starting and stopping the Wiremock server should be fast enough. We saw how JUnit 4 solves the boilerplate setup with the class rule. And in case we use the class rule, we have to again use the rule to do the resetting in the background. And with this last video, now saw a small workaround how we can um, seamlessly integrate Wiremock to uh, testing Spring Boot applications using the application context initializer and doing all the housekeeping and setup tasks as part of this class. For further testing tips and tricks and also recipes like you've just seen with this Wiremock series, take a look at my testing Spring Boot Applications Masterclass, where I'll guide you through unit testing, integration testing and end-to-end -end testing for a real-world Spring Boot application. So there we will also make heavy use of Wiremock to stop our dependent systems and also we'll see how we can use it to mock out the OAuth 2 login. You can find the link to this masterclass as part of the description of this YouTube video. And this masterclass is really a deep dive testing course. It's more than nine hours long. We have more than 100 video lessons and really do a deep dive on testing Spring Boot applications, uh, discuss best practices, and also take a look at several recipes that will make testing more joyful.